Hey, John Hickok here. Today we're going to do a chapter two with the M44 Mosin, or as I like to call it, the Stabby Mosin, because we got a stabber. We got a little poker right here on the side, and I'll show you that a little bit later, but that's the big distinguishing factor of the M44. But of course, this is a chapter two, uh, so if you want to see, get a lot of information about, about the rifle, check out the original video that we did on the Mosin. And after you've watched that, watch other videos on the M44 out there on the internet. A lot of, a lot of good stuff out there in YouTube land. Uh, mostly going to uh, shoot stuff with it and stab stuff with it in this video. So I've got four rounds in the magazine. Uh, I'm going to try it again and make sure it wasn't just me, which it still could just be me. Uh, but a lot of bolt actions, of course, you can load the full magazine, which this would hold five rounds, and you can push down and overshoot it with the bolt so you don't have rounds in the chamber. Uh, but I wasn't able to do that. I only have four in there. So let's fire them off. Let's uh, start on that orange two liter right there. Uh, let's try the green one. All right. Let's go ahead and try the red plate up there on the left. Okay, so the stabby, pointy, sticky Mosin, the M44. Um, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this rifle, and a lot of you are probably also familiar with the SKS, uh, the Russian one particularly, uh, and of course some of the other variants as well. And the thing that makes them similar, other than being Russian in origin, is they have this attached, and you see we're unloaded here. And uh, they have this attached bayonet. This is not the blade style. It's that the uh, the true poker <laughs> star-shaped uh, bayonet, which um, it's pretty nasty because you get you get uh, jabbed with one of those. It's it's going to be much harder for the wound to heal, which I'll show you later because we're going to stab some stuff down range. Of course, you have to stab some stuff when you have a stabber on your rifle. Uh, but I've always thought these were kind of neat just because it's a shorter Mosin, you know, and, and these things became very available several years ago. It's funny when you go, and if you watch a lot of YouTube videos on the M44, a lot of the guys, including ours probably, uh, will talk about how all these things are really affordable and they're everywhere and they're cheap and everything. And of course that has changed. Um, you know, these things uh, can't be had for much less than 300 bucks now, a lot, three, four, 500 bucks, depending on the condition and, and a lot of different different factors but there was a time when you know these things were coming into the country and you know you could get them for 75 100 bucks 150 bucks all day you know and people were just scarfing them up and just using them as fun range toys and um you know and it really got people excited about the mosins in general um and these m44s uh i remember i guess it was the i don't know if they all came about at the same time but it seemed like you know it was mostly just the, the standard 9130s that were coming on the market and then whenever people started getting these things in their hands, um, you know, people were talking about these a lot because, you know, having the, the bayonet that's attached and uh, also the, trying to uh, take dad's eye out <laughs> with this thing. And uh, also the, the shorter barrel, everything, you get more muzzle blast, you know, and, uh, and I know people were really loving these things and, and understandably, they're really, really neat. And uh, they're cool, they're just fun. All right, let's load it up. A few more rounds here. Um, you know, you've probably heard me talk about Mosins before. I'm not a huge Mosin fan. They're neat. I appreciate the history of them. But I've always found that the Mosin action was a little bit awkward. So let me try that, what I was talking about before. So sometimes I've got five rounds in there. And a lot of bolt actions, you can, if you push it down, you can get the bolt to go. It's like it almost, almost wants to do it. So I don't know if it's designed to not be able to or what. But, yeah, so... There you go. All right. Now I have noticed this one has that sticky bolt situation that a lot of Mosins have that have been refurbished. So the more I shoot it, you know, I'll kind of have to fight with it. So um, hopefully won't have to go to the table and, and knock it open. Okay. There we go. See, already I've got that issue. I think I forgot what there's um, some saying about these things. It's called the, the karate chop action or something like that. But, uh, 
that's kind of what you get with a lot of these refurbished ones. I forget exactly what it is. It has something to do with them being uh, packed in Cosmoline or, or something like that. From, but from what I understand, it wasn't really an issue with the, you know, with the original ones. Or the, you know, like it wasn't like guys running around in World War II and uh, and after, you know, <laughs> having to do all that. But it's also kind of the nature of the action too, because it makes it what makes it worse is because the bolt handle is so short on these things you can't get as much leverage uh just like on the pu sniper where it's got the um longer bolt that's turned down you know if it if it kind of wants to stick on your side it's big of a deal because you, you just have a lot more leverage you know and i feel like if the mausers had that issue as well it wouldn't be as as big of a deal just because the action is much more robust and solid and you know there's more to grab a hold of all right Let's take out, let's take out some of these water jugs. Let's see, let me get this one down here on the left. Let's, uh, let's get the orange two liter. Get the other one. No shot left. Let's uh, smoke a pot. Look at that. Does all those things. Okay, as you see, we're unloaded. I want to go down here and stab this pumpkin. So one thing too, I want to point out now. You saw, you know, we're unloaded and everything. Um, now I would assume in combat they wouldn't be as worried about being unloaded when they put this bayonet out. Um, but as you put it out you can see that you don't really have to get your fingers in front of the muzzle now if it went off right there it would not be fun it would not feel good but you know you'd probably have all your fingers so i'm not going to charge down here and fall and make myself look like an idiot any more than i already am but i do want to kind of show you what the what the wound on on this thing looks like so you get that star shape you probably heard people talk about how um you know those wounds are much more difficult to heal, which is kind of the sinister <laughs> nature of war. But makes a pretty good poker, though. And I guess it, you know, it comes out faster maybe than the blade style. But yeah, that's pretty wicked. Let's try on that on that stalk. It's something that's a lot heftier and see. Well, now we just knocked the pumpkin over. So it's not exactly a super sharp point or anything. It's kind of like the end of a screwdriver, but with the weight of the rifle and everything, you know, going in. So, uh, it's a good sticker, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, it shoots, it shoots the pumpkin now. Okay, and the bayonet back down. A few more in there. But well, these are these are fun little range guns they've uh you know they've just been a, kind of a part of uh shooting culture in the past several years you know definitely if you were into mosins 10 or 15 years ago you definitely get full uh i don't know hipster credit hipsters don't really a thing anymore but um you know it, it's most people didn't know much about these rifles myself included uh before they all came a bunch of them came into the country and of course some of them were around um of course but it's just kind of interesting how they became this gun culture phenomenon just because the you know the market was just flooded with them and you know it's happened in the past with other different rifles and everything but i, I guess this is probably one of the first ones there in the in the internet social media age you know so it became kind of a a bigger deal like if youtube was around when the sks's were hitting and everything like that i guess it would have been kind of similar but these are neat I, I hope that there will be another influx of some other type of uh, military surplus rifle you know i kind of kind of uh feel like maybe this was the last one this is like the mosin's the big mosin uh um uh locust like plague on the <laughs> on the gun world was uh 
uh, maybe the last one that we'll see of that, which is kind of sad, but hopefully there's something else. Hopefully there's like crates and crates full of some other neat, neat rifle that's going to come in in big numbers. We'll see. But these things are still available. They're still out there and they're a lot of fun. Okay. Let's shoot that pumpkin, see what it does. Big 7.62 by 54R. All right. So I noticed if I bring it down and really aggressively move that bolt fast, I don't even notice it sticking really. Uh, trying to to work the action from the shoulder from the um, from the shoulder is is uh, pretty difficult. It's, as it heats up, it's getting worse. But again, you guys that have these things, and a lot of you probably do, that are watching this video, you kind of know it's sort of part of the deal with these things. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and smoke that pot. I'm saving that two liter right there for something special. Some of you might be able to guess what that is. All right, smoke this big pot. Huh. Didn't work out it's quite so great. Maybe it's not a very Russian kind of thing. Let's uh, take out this other jug here. All right, I want to take some more shots over over on the hill. I haven't done much of that yet. The sights seem to be on pretty well. I just got to make sure I hold up on it. Just while I'm doing this too, don't forget, I don't know what, who knows when you're actually watching this video, but uh, you know we did switch over our merchandise to uh, bunkerbranding.com, which is Matt from Demolition Ranch. I'm sure you guys know him. It's his company. I'm going to try to put too many in there. So bunkerbranding.com is where we have all of our merch now. So I still get people asking me, when are you guys going to have t-shirts? Like, well, we've had them for a while. <laughs> so I'll try to remember to remind you guys. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the red plates over there. Start on the left one. Right. Uh, go over to the one on the far right. Okay, so next one over to the left, going small to, I mean, bigger to small. All right, now let's try the little one. All right, let's try, let's try the little one again. Yeah, so these things are a lot of fun, even with the, the short barrel. And, you know, that part of the um, manifestation of these rifles is kind of just a natural course of, of the evolution of military rifles over decades or a century or, or, or whatever. Is they, they kind of went from long rifles, you know, going back to the early days of the muskets, you know, big long rifles, and, and they keep shorting them and making them even shorter. Of course, it's kind of... You know, they're not continuing to make them too much shorter nowadays, uh, but they eventually realized that you don't necessarily need a super long barrel to achieve a reasonable amount of accuracy. And also warfare was sort of changing and uh, more house to house fighting and street fighting and things like that. And having these big, long, you know, ungainly uh, rifles was kind of a disadvantage. So a lot of militaries were moving to shorter rifles, you know, like with the M38 and the M44 Mosin. You know, and then of course the Germans, you had the, the you know, from the G98 to the K98, um, you know, and even with the Americans, you know, the M16 to the M4, and the, the shorter AR style rifles and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of been a natural uh, course of things in warfare to adapt more for urban warfare and street combat. It's kind of what it seems like. And also I, I think, you know, from what I've heard and seen and read, um, you know, there, it depends on the caliber and a bunch of different factors. I don't get really nerdy into long range accuracy and all that kind of stuff. And not to put it down at all, I'm just saying that's just not my, my forte. 
Um, but I think there's a lot of people who have kind of determined that you don't necessarily need some, you know, 47 inch barrel to have uh, great accuracy. Um, you can have pretty good accuracy out of a, out of a shorter barrel. So uh, I'm going to shoot one more round and then I got a special treat for you guys. Uh, don't worry. It's, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We don't know how special it'll be. We'll see what happens, but could be cool or it could be very dumb. Let's shoot the pumpkin a couple more times. Uh, let's see. We got a jug right there. I'll go ahead and shoot that one. And we've got... What else do we have? we got this bowling pin over here. Ah. All right. I was hoping we wouldn't have to resort to the table, but let's come to that. All right. We just got one round left. I'm going to put the last round, hopefully on that red plate. Otherwise, I'll have to put another one in and shoot it again. All right. Okay. So... As you can see, we're unloaded. You knew I was going to do something with the bayonet, right? So unloaded. We'll even, just for safety, we we'll take the bolt out so we know we're unloaded. Bend it out. And then I'm going to stab that two liter. And then we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I can actually puncture it. It does something cool and it doesn't just knock it off, but <laughs> we'll find out. All right. There we go. It's gonna have to be a pretty good hit. Get a little closer. All right. <laughs> Took him out. He's dead. So there you go. The Mosin M44. The uh, the Stabby Mosin. It's a really really neat rifle. Great rifle. If you get a chance to pick one up, I definitely definitely recommend it. They're just just a lot of fun. Um, you know, and they can still be had pretty reasonably. And these kind of things, you know, there is probably not going to be any more of them coming into the country. So whatever's out there is out there. So um, get it while you can, just like, you know, you should have got them when they were 100 bucks. Well, people in another 10 years will be saying, oh, should have got them when they were only 400 bucks, you know. So jump on it while you can. And I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Hope you had a good time, and I'll talk to you later. Welcome to the end of the video. Just uh, clear out this pumpkin for our annual pumpkin carving video. But since you're here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So go check them out at sdi.edu. And also, while you're on the internet, make sure you check out our own website. We have merchandise like this. Some of it will be limited. This strip may not be available, but we have several that are going to be available uh, across the board. Hickok45.com. We kept it simple for you. So go over to Hickok45.com. Check that out. We've got merchandise over there. Um, there's links to all of our other social media, like Hickok45 on Facebook, uh, Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. I have an Instagram page that I use uh, quite often. I show some back uh, behind the scenes and different things like that. Uh, John underscore Hickok45 uh, Instagram. And then uh, there's a Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel. Um, and there is full30.com. Don't forget to check that out. And I think that's about it. I appreciate you guys. And I'll talk to you later.